So on 150 milligrams a week, which is what this blood test was, my testosterone level was sitting at... So guys, I wanted to do an update on my testosterone replacement therapy protocol. As you guys know, I am taking TRT and I'm prescribed it legally through my doctor. Everything is usually under check, but we'll go through the blood test results here, speak about a few things related to TRT, and really speak about a few things that are important to monitor on TRT. You don't need to do everything perfectly. You can still live your life. You can still eat what you want to eat to a certain degree and have fun. But there are certain things that change when you're on TRT and we'll go through them now today. And there are certain things that you just need to be more mindful of in your blood work that you probably need to monitor more closely compared to someone who I'm working with who is totally natural. So starting with HSCRP, C-reactive protein, a key inflammatory marker to show how much inflammation your body is really dealing with at any one given time. My CRP level was 0.78, a very low, a very healthy inflammation level. I don't try to increase my oxidative stress more than it should be. I take a lot of precautions in terms of supplements and protocols like sauna usage to reduce my inflammation. 0.78 is a level I'm very happy with. Now my IGF-1 is always high because I use saunas quite a bit and sauna usage significantly increases growth hormone and IGF-1 levels. My IGF-1 is sitting just over reference range at 46 nanomoles per liter as a result mainly of my sauna usage. So a little hack for you if you are interested in boosting your IGF-1 levels or growth hormone levels and getting another anabolic vector, not just testosterone, but growth hormone, maybe incorporate some saunas if your IGF-1 is low or growth hormone levels are low and you want to increase them. My cortisol slightly low in the morning at 256. I'm not too overly concerned about this. It has been higher and should probably be a little higher than this first thing in the morning, but it's something to monitor as we go forward with my current blood work. Now, in terms of general blood chemistry, most of the things here that I'm looking for in anyone I'm working with are mainly the liver function tests, so AST, ALT, GGT, all of those are well within reference range for me. My bilirubin is genetically high. That's always been the case with me. Urea, slightly high at 10. This is something that I probably need to mitigate through increased water load and also being mindful of how hard I'm training. So urea and nitrogenous waste products can build up when you do a lot of heavy resistance training, making sure you're taking in enough fluids to help the kidneys excrete a lot of those nitrogenous waste products is going to be key if you are training hard, doing a lot of heavy bodybuilding or resistance training, and you want to try and keep those nitrogenous waste products low so you're not overloading your kidneys chronically, trying to turn over all of these waste products through the urine. In line with that, it's probably also why my CK creatine kinase is so high at 404. Again, I trained the night before I got this blood work done. A lot of muscle protein breakdown was occurring at the time when I got the blood work done and I just need to be mindful. And what I will do next blood test is not get it done straight away after I've trained to allow my body to break down some of that muscle and turn it over rather than the contents of the muscle being broken down in the blood. And that's why they're being picked up here. CK, a primary component of muscle breakdown and the process of muscle breakdown. Now, iron stores look good. My iron levels are typically good. I do donate blood, but I try to supplement iron after that donation to ensure I'm not crashing my iron levels. A lot of guys on TRT or cycles will donate blood and then they're feeling pretty crap, you know, a week or two weeks later because their iron levels have been crashed. So ensuring that your iron levels are not crashed and ensuring that your red blood cell count is low, but whilst maintaining good iron stores is critical if you're on TRT because we know that androgenic steroids, anabolic androgenic steroids increase red blood cell production and can make your blood thick. So this is one of the things you need to balance on TRT. Looking at the fats in the blood, we know that steroids and TRT have not always, but can increase the proportion of LDL cholesterol in your blood, also known as bad cholesterol. That is the cholesterol that's attaching to the artery walls and causing plaque and reduces the level of HDL, which takes that plaque away back to the liver to be processed. Now we want high HDL and low LDL in most cases for overall heart health and to ensure that we're not getting plaque accumulation in our arteries over a long period of time. My total cholesterol was, was at four, but what I'm most happy with is through a process of supplementation, including berberine, I have increased my HDL to 1.3 and I've reduced my LDL to 2.3. So my cholesterol levels look good and it's really telling me that I'm not significantly increasing the plaque load in any coronary arteries around my heart, which is gonna be key 
not while I'm 27 years old, but when I'm 37, 47, 57 and onwards, because staying safe and healthy on TIT or cycle is not having a heart attack. Now, these are good tests, but they're not super specific. And one of the most specific tests for predicting heart disease, in particular, predicting how much plaque is going to accumulate in any artery is the ApoB, ApoA testing. So I went and got this done and I usually get this done on all of the blood work that I do. Now, ApoA1 is a specific protein found embedded on HDL cholesterol, so good cholesterol. And apolipoprotein B is the protein found on LDL cholesterol. So what you want is you want a high apolipoprotein A1 and a low apolipoprotein B. Now, my apolipoprotein B was 0.7. Now, this is a relatively good good result. Um, it probably could be a little bit lower. I've been down historically, I think as low as 0.5 or 0.6. And my apolipoprotein A1 is over the one gram per liter mark cutoff. I was at 1.3. So it's telling me more specifically exactly how much HDL, exactly how much LDL I'm carrying around my body. And this is a very specific test. Studies have shown that apolipoprotein A1 and apolipoprotein B are incredibly specific sensitive tests for determining your propensity for cardiovascular disease and heart attack, stroke, things like that. So ensuring that you dive deeper into cholesterol is gonna really try and give you more data about how your arteries are actually holding up and how your blood is actually looking from a fat standpoint. Homocysteine as a vital amino acid, especially for cardiovascular health, brain health, and other things. My homocysteine level was 8.3 and high levels of homocysteine are implicated in disease and heart attack risk. So at 8.3, well within reference range, and this is something I'm very happy with and very comfortable keeping right here. My glucose was 4.5, well within reference range. We know that testosterone and anabolic steroids typically reduces serum glucose levels as it increases insulin sensitivity, thyroid profile, all well within reference range here and showing that most of my metabolic processes should be working quite well in terms of metabolism, in terms of energy and cellular breakdown. And then my red blood cell count count and my white blood cell count. And now two of the biggest things I'm looking at here are hemoglobin and hematocrit. So hemoglobin at 165 wasn't necessarily terrible. Hemoglobin is basically the protein in the red blood cell itself that delivers oxygen. But what did concern me was hematocrit at 0.5. Now, it's not terrible. Now, hematocrit is the percentage by volume of red blood cells in your blood in your whole blood, basically. Now, when you have a very high production of red blood cells, your hematocrit will increase a lot, just simply due to the fact that it's a percentage value. My hematocrit was 0.5. Now, it's still within reference range, but 0.5, 50% is probably getting to closer to the range where I'm not that comfortable with it being. Anabolic steroids, TRT, even very low doses of TRT can increase red blood cell count slightly. And what happens when you increase red blood cell count is your blood becomes in a way thicker and it becomes more prone to clotting and things like that. So you don't want thick blood. And what I usually do when I see my hematocrit rise above sort of 48, 49% is I will go and donate blood. And once I donate blood, that value comes down very quickly in the realm of eight, nine, 10% immediately because you're letting all of that blood leave your body and you're getting rid of a lot of those red blood cells. And this is one of the things on TRT that you need to be mindful of. If I had to say three of the biggest things on TRT, on blood work that you need to keep in mind, it's hematocrit blood thickness, it's your cholesterol levels or your general plaque accumulation in your arteries. And then of course, it's your testosterone levels themselves. So on 150 milligrams a week, which is what this blood test was, my testosterone level was sitting at 32.5 nanomoles per liter, which in American units is 937 nanograms per deciliter. So quite high, you know, right at the limit of that high natural, potentially even non-natural range. My SHBG, which is what binds to the total testosterone, was sitting at 23, which is putting my calculated free T if you're taking the total and the SHBG together at 857.4 picomoles per liter, again, over reference range and probably indicative of my protocol being slightly too high. The real goal with TRT is you want to keep it, most cases, around about high natural, you know, 
a little bit below the reference range, but not like super, super crazy over the reference range um, because you have to think true TRT is where a healthy human male naturally would be sitting at in terms of testosterone levels. No human male is going to chronically bleed out 900 nanograms per deciliter 24 seven. So in most cases, this kind of level is probably too high. And it is one of the reasons why I have dropped my dose a little bit back down to 125 milligrams per week. And I will be going to get blood work done to see where that puts me. But it's all about adjusting based on the blood work. Another reason I wanted to adjust as well is if we look at my estrogen E2 values, I was sitting at 127 picomoles per liter, which again is probably slightly higher. Most men are feeling good around that 50 to 60 to 70 mark, um, sometimes as high as 80. But for me, having E2 right up at 127, I was starting to feel a bit more bloated. My blood pressure was higher, a little bit more emotional. Sex drive was probably lower than where it should be based on these levels. And things like that are starting to really indicate to me that my estrogen is too high, my testosterone is too high, and it is all of these things put together that really have informed my decision to bring it back down to 125 milligrams per week. And this is what I say to guys all the time when I'm working with them. In conclusion, basically, it becomes like your reaction to the blood work itself. Yes, symptoms are important, but if the blood work is showing that hematocrit is too high, that cholesterol is too high, or there is some other issues, or that even E2 or testosterone itself is too high, you, in most cases, it's really about pulling that back and just being smart and sensible with your dosing to ensure that it is actually true TRT and you're not starting to run into super physiological levels for 24 seven, you know, seven days a week. So that's a little update on my TRT protocol. 150 milligrams a week puts me at 937 nanograms per deciliter. And we will see what 125 milligrams brings me. The final point of this, if you have stuck around to the end of the video, is for those of you out there concerned about hair loss, I do get a DHT value done as well. DHT being the primary hormone responsible for male pattern baldness and balding in men. My DHT sitting at 0.6. I probably want that to be a little bit lower around that 0.4 mark would be great in terms of nanomoles per liter. And it's also another reason why I brought my dose back down to 125 milligrams per week. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really appreciate all the support. I will see you in the next video.